Chapter 14 India Location, Geological Structure and Physiography 2 Introduction The landform which is irregular and has some altitude on the surface of the earth is called physiography. It includes mountains, plateaus, plains, etc. On the basis of physiography, India can be divided into the following physiographic regions. 1. Northern mountainous region 2. Great northern plains 3. Peninsula plateau 4. The coastal plains 5. Archipelagos Northern mountainous region This is an important natural region of India. It is known as the Himalayan mountain system spread over 2,400 kilometers in west-east direction in the north. It has an arc shape. Its width ranges between 240 kilometers to 320 kilometers. The Himalaya is not a single mountain, but is a complex of many mountain ranges. Going towards east from Afghanistan, it extends up to Myanmar via India, Nepal and Bhutan. It has more span in Tibet in the north. It is a part of mountain system known as the Pamir Knot. Himalayas on the whole can be divided into two divisions. One, Northern Himalayan region. Two, Eastern Himalayas. Northern Himalayan region. There are three mountain ranges parallel to each other. The northern range is called the Greater Himalayas. This is the loftiest range among the Himalayas, wherein there are more than 40 peaks, which exceed height of 7,000 meters. Most famous among them is Mount Everest, which is 8,848 meters high. It is on Nepal-China border. It is known as Sagarmatha in Tibet. Other famous peak is Godwin Austin or K2, 8,611 meters, which is the highest peak of India. There are three distinct ranges in Himalayas which are almost parallel to each other. In the greater Himalayas, there are some high mountain passes such as Jalep La, Nathu La, Shipki La, etc. Mansarovar, which is considered to be a sacred holy place, China, is located in this range. Second range in the south of the Greater Himalayas is also spread in a wider area. It is called Central Himalayas or the Lesser Himalayas. With a width ranging from 80 to 100 kilometers, this range includes mountain ranges like Pir Panjal, Mahabharat, Nagtiba, etc. Many hill stations have developed in this moderately high range. Some of these hill stations are Dalhousie, Dharmshala, Shimla, Masuri, Raniket, Almoda, Nainital, Darjeeling, etc. Gangotri, Yamnotri, Badrinath, Kedarnath, Hemkund Saheb, etc. are famous holy places. Kullu, Kangra and Kashmir are extremely beautiful natural valleys in this region. Third range, situated in further south, is known as Shivalik or Outer Himalayas and most of it falls within India. It is about 10 to 15 kilometers wide and has an average height of 1000 meters. Peculiar valley formations have taken place in this range which are covered by gravel, stones and thick sediments. Locally, these are known as Dun. Example, Dehradun, Patli Dun, etc. Eastern Himalaya Ranges situated in the eastern part of Himalayan ranges have lesser height. Some of them are more famous as hills. These hills in eastern Himalayas are spread as smaller ranges. Among them, Patkai Hills are situated in Arunachal Pradesh, Naga Hills in Nagaland, and Lushai or Mizo Hills in Mizoram. These hills are located near the eastern border and have their continuation in Arakan Yoma range of Myanmar. Garo, Khasi and Jaintia Hills are in Meghalaya.
Mountainous regions have more rainfall, so dense forests have developed here. As this is a forested area, roads and railways have not developed much. Great Northern Plain This northern plain is located between the northern mountainous region and the southern peninsula. This plain is formed due to the alluvial sediments brought by Himalayan rivers such as Satluj, Ganga and Brahmaputra. At some places, the layers of the sediments are about 50 meters thick. As these plains occupy very large area in North India, these are known as Great Plains of Northern India. The plain is about 2,400 km long. It is considered as one of the largest river plains of the world. Its western part is narrower than the eastern part. The plain is almost a level land. None of its part is higher than 180 meters from sea level. The plain is very narrow near Delhi. The Satluj plain lies to the west of Delhi, while the Ganga plain is in the east. This plain is considered to be the most prosperous region of India. Important cities such as Delhi, Kanpur, Lucknow, Allahabad, Varanasi, Patna, Kolkata, etc. are situated in this plain. Sindhu River and its tributaries Jhelum, Chenab, Ravi, Bias and Satlaj originate in Himalayas. Generally, a region between two rivers is called Doab. That is, Do means two and Ab means water. Thus, the plain which is formed by five rivers is called Punjab. Punj plus Ab. Most of this plain is in Pakistan. On the basis of physiography, the plain is divided into four parts. Bhabar, Tarai, Bangar, Khadar. A small and narrow belt of gravels and stones lies parallel to the river from Sindhu up to Teesta River in Shivalik foothills. This belt is almost 8 to 16 km wide. It is called Bhabar. The Terai region which is more humid and marshy comes next. Dense forests and diversified wildlife are seen here. The old alluvium in the plains is called Bangar. Due to the consistent deposition, it develops a terrace shape which is at a higher level than flood plains. The new sediment of the flood is called Khadar. Peninsular Plateau This is the oldest region of India. This region appears as an inverted triangle. Its average height is about 600 to 900 meters. Its northern part slopes towards northeast, which is evident from the flow of Chambal, Son and Damodar rivers. The southern part slopes towards southeast. Most of its area is in south. Hence, it is also called Southern Plateau. As it is surrounded by sea on its three sides, it is called a Peninsular Plateau. Peninsular Plateau can be divided into two parts. One, Malwa Plateau. Two, Deccan Plateau. Malwa Plateau Aravali Range is situated to the northwest of Malwa Plateau. Aravali is one of the oldest ranges in the world. It is a folded mountain. Mount Abu is the famous hill station on this range. It is very beautiful and pleasant. Guru Shikhar is its highest peak and it is 1722 meters high. To the south of this region, the rivers Chambal and Betwa emerging from Vindhyachal flow northwards and meet river Yamuna. While river Son flows northwards and meets river Ganga. It can be known from the direction of river flow that the region slopes northwards. The northeastern part of this central upland is known as Bundelkhand. Besides this, Rivers Luni and Banas also originate in the Aravali range in northeast. These rivers vanish in the run of Kutch, while Sabarmati and Mahi rivers meet the Gulf of Kambhat. 
From the flow of these rivers, it can be ascertained that the western part of Malwa Plateau slopes towards southwest. Rajmahal Hills and Shillong Plateau are a part of Chota Nagpur Plateau, which also includes Ranchi Plateau. Deccan Plateau The Deccan Plateau is situated to the south of Satpura, Mahadev and Maikal Ranges, which are located to the south of the Malwa Plateau. The northwestern parts of the plateau are composed of lava deposits. On the western side, its border is demarcated by western ghats, which runs north-south along the Arabian Sea coast. It has several local names. It is known Sahyadri in Maharashtra and Karnataka, as Nilgiri in Tamil Nadu, as Annamalai and Kardamam ranges along the border of Kerala and Tamil Nadu. The southern portion of western ghats is more lofty. Generally, the average height of Deccan Plateau ranges from 900 to 1000 meters, but at a few places it exceeds that height. Few isolated hills having more than 900 meters of height form the eastern boundary of this plateau. This is called Eastern Ghats. It has a general slope towards southeast which is evident from the direction of the flow of the rivers. Except rivers Narmada and Tapi, which flow westwards, most of the rivers of Deccan Plateau flow eastwards and meet the Bay of Bengal. Coastal Plains Plains along the seacoast Peninsular Plateau is surrounded by a narrow belt of plains from Kutch to Orisha. It is divided into western and eastern coastal plains. The west coast plain is spread from Gujarat to Kerala. Except in Gujarat, the plain is mostly narrow. It is very much undulating and is known as Malabar Coast to the south of Goa. West coast rivers have developed creeks at their estuaries. Most of these creeks are submerged valleys under river water. These are formed due to the emergence of seashore. It provides favorable conditions for fishery. There are many natural ports on the western coast, which include Mumbai and Marmagao. Backwaters have developed along the southern coast of Kerala and these are known as Kayal in local language. East Coast Plain is much broader than the West Coast Plain. There is substantial alluvial deposition in the deltas of Kaveri, Krishna, Godavari and Mahanadi. Its northern coast is known as North Sarkar Coast and the Tamil Nadu coast is known as Coromandel Coast. Archipelagos There are few archipelagos in India. Andaman Nicobar and Lakshadweep are major archipelagos among them. There are many smaller islands in Lakshadweep and these are located at some distance off Kerala coast. These islands have a horseshoe shape. Such coral islands are called atolls. Andaman Nicobar Islands are situated in the Bay of Bengal. Here the number of islands is also more and three are situated very far from Indian coast. There are few mountain ranges, some of which are formed due to the volcanic activity. These islands are spread over 350 kilometers and have a strategic importance. Like to know The only active volcano in India is Barren Island in Andaman Nicobar Archipelago. Narkondam, which is very near to it, is a dormant volcano. Thus, there is a diversity in the physical features of India. Every region has its own distinct characteristics and yet all regions are interconnected. All of them have important contribution in the progress of the nation and are useful in the forest resources. Northern fertile plains are also called storehouse of grains. Southern plateau is rich in many mineral resources which has enhanced the national progress. Many rivers with large volume of water originate in the northern mountainous region which is also known for a variety of forest resources. Rock 
A composite matter made up of one or more minerals is called a rock. Rocks can be hard as well as soft. They can be porous or non-porous and can be light or heavy in weight. Various types of rocks are formed due to different processes. Rocks can be divided into three categories on the basis of their formation. These are 1. Igneous rocks 2. Stratified rocks 3. Metamorphic rocks Igneous rocks The intense heat in the interior of the earth is responsible for the formation of these rocks. The interior of the earth remains very hot due to this heat. So the matter here is in semi-liquid state, which is called as magma. Eventually, when this magma cools down, rocks are formed. These rocks are formed due to the effect of heat. Hence, these are called igneous or agnea rocks. In the formation of the crust of the earth, these rocks were formed earliest. So these are also called primary rocks. At many places in Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh and southern peninsula in India, such rocks are formed. Igneous rocks are most solid of all rocks. Granite is a well-known example of plutonic rock. Basalt is also this type of rock. Stratified rocks. Igneous rocks disintegrate due to the collective effect of water and other forces. These are also known as sedimentary rocks. The broken rock material is constantly deposited in water and they form layers. Thus, rock material is deposited into different layers. The upper layers exert pressure on the layers of underlying rocks, which are formed initially and are lying at the bottom. And eventually, rocks are formed with different layers. These are called stratified rocks. Its examples are gypsum, limestone and coal. Coal and gypsum are obtained from Bihar and Jharkhand states. Metamorphic rocks In certain peculiar conditions, the form, composition and other characteristics of rocks are totally changed. Due to the combined effect of two factors, high temperature and pressure of rock strata, the igneous and sedimentary rocks change into a totally new form. These newly formed rocks are known as metamorphic rocks. Marble and quartzite available in Rajasthan are their best examples. Mineral Mineral is that matter which is formed due to natural organic or inorganic process and has a specific chemical composition. Minerals are available from the interior of the earth in solid, liquid and gaseous forms. Minerals depend on the geological structure of the surface of the earth. Minerals such as iron, copper, nickel, gold, silver, etc. are found in igneous rocks. Coal, mineral oil and natural gas etc. are available from stratified rocks while slate, marble, diamond etc. are available from metamorphic rocks. Classification of minerals in our routine life, about 200 minerals are used directly or indirectly. A universally accepted classification of minerals is not possible. However, a general classification can be done as follows. Metallic minerals Precious metallic minerals Gold, silver, platinum, etc. Light metallic minerals Magnesium, bauxite, titanium, etc. Minerals of general use iron, copper, lead, zinc, tin, nickel, etc. Minerals used alloys chromium, manganese, tungsten, vanadium, etc. Non-metallic minerals limestone, chalk, asbestos, mica, flarspar, gypsum, sulphur, diamond, etc. Energy resources Coal, mineral oil and natural gas Uranium, thorium, etc. Important minerals 1. Iron 
आयन ओर इज फाउंड मेनली इन झारखंड छत्तीसगढ़ आंध्र प्रदेश गोवा उड़ीसा तमिलनाडु महाराष्ट्र राजस्थान कर्नाटका बिहार मध्य प्रदेश स्टेट्स विच प्रोड्यूस 60 टू 68 परसेंट रॉ आयन टू मैंगनीज द मेन रिजर्व ऑफ मैंगनीज ओर आर इन कर्नाटका उड़ीसा मध्य प्रदेश महाराष्ट्र एंड गोवा थ्री कॉपर कॉपर इज ऑल्सो फाउंड इन गुजरात कर्नाटका आंध्र प्रदेश उत्तर प्रदेश सिक्किम मेघालय महाराष्ट्र वेस्ट बंगाल मध्य प्रदेश झारखंड एंड राजस्थान फोर बॉक्साइट बॉक्साइट इज फाउंड इन आंध्र प्रदेश छत्तीसगढ़ गुजरात महाराष्ट्र झारखंड एंड उड़ीसा फाइव माइका द मेन प्रोड्यूसर्स ऑफ माइका आर आंध्र प्रदेश राजस्थान बिहार एंड झारखंड सिक्स लेड लेड इज प्रोड्यूस्ड मोस्टली इन राजस्थान आंध्र प्रदेश एंड तमिलनाडु गुजरात वेस्ट बंगाल मध्य प्रदेश उत्तर प्रदेश उड़ीसा महाराष्ट्र मेघालय एंड सिक्किम ऑल्सो प्रोड्यूस अ लिटिल क्वांटिटी ऑफ लेड सेवन लाइमस्टोन नियरली सेवेंटी फाइव परसेंट ऑफ लाइम स्टोन इज प्रोड्यूस्ड इन मध्य प्रदेश छत्तीसगढ़ आंध्र प्रदेश राजस्थान गुजरात कर्नाटका एंड हिमाचल प्रदेश सॉइल वी नो दैट सॉइल इज द बेसिक रिसोर्स फॉर एग्रीकल्चर बिसाइड्स एग्रीकल्चर सॉइल इज ऑल्सो वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट सॉइल इज अ थिन लेयर फॉर्म्ड ऑफ द ऑर्गेनिक एंड इनऑर्गेनिक मैटर ऑन द सर्फेस ऑफ द अर्थ Soil is related to the surface of the earth in the same way as the apple with its skin. The thin layer on the crust of the earth is called soil. Soil formation. Soil is the result of denudation of rocks. The rock surface is eroded due to factors like temperature, rain, snow, air, vegetation and insects and it turns into powdery form. Thus it forms the land layer in this layer there are gravels smaller stones pebbles soil particles etc which are known as regolith it contains only mineral contents then the biotic matter air and water are mixed with it finally soil is formed out of this mixture the process of soil formation is a long term process soils in india Soils in India are classified into 6 types. 1 alluvial soil, 2 black or rigor soil, 3 red soil, 4 laterite soil, 5 mountain soil, 6 desert soil. Alluvial soil. Alluvial soil can be divided into two parts. Khadar and bungar the soil formed due to the fresh alluvial deposit is known as khadar soil as this soil is formed due to the river floods it is found mostly nearby the river generally such soil is sandy soil containing old alluvium in the upper valley region of a river is called bungar soil it is sticky and has dark color Alluvial soil is seen in many parts of the country. Their fertility is also different at different places. Generally, such soil is very fertile. It is found in Punjab, Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, West Bengal, etc. Black soil. This soil is found mostly in Maharashtra, Western Madhya Pradesh, Gujarat, Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh, Telangana, and Tamil Nadu. Black soil is the gift of peninsular plateau. This soil is very sticky and fertile. It can contain humidity for a prolonged time. It is formed from the metamorphic rocks and is very useful for cotton cultivation.
That is why it has become famous as black cotton soil. It is also known as rigor soil. Red soil. Such soil is found in regions of igneous and metamorphic rocks. Its red color is due to its ferrous and other humus contents. The soil is porous and fertile. Such soil is seen in Goa, Tamil Nadu, Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh, Odisha and Jharkhand. Laterite soil. Laterite soil develops as a result of excessive erosion by rain. Due to heavy rain, the humus contents from the top soil descend into the lower strata, which is called leaching. As the soil contains less humus, it is less fertile. The red sandstones contain iron and aluminium. The erosion of these rocks results into its red color. Such soil is found in mountainous region of Karnataka, Kerala, Odisha and some parts of Northeast. Mountain soils. Humus content is more due to the forests, although it differs from place to place. Such soil on Shivalik range is less fertile and less developed. The soil is sandy and porous and does not contain humus. Such soil is found in the mountainous region of the country, such as in Meghalaya, Arunachal Pradesh, Eastern Hill Ranges, Uttarakhand, Himachal Pradesh and Jammu Kashmir states. Desert Soils Such soil is found in the arid and semi-arid regions of Gujarat, Rajasthan, Punjab and Haryana. The soil here is more alkaline and has less humus contents. Agriculture has been made possible in such soil only through irrigation. Thus, a large diversity in soils of the nation is seen due to diversity in climate and relief features.